Thank you. Well, you're certainly the enduring saints all day long. I'm proud of you. But it's been great to be here. Are you blessed? I wished I had the, the real big answer to how to prepare for disease X. But we know something's coming. It's just all part of the world that we live in. But is there a way that we can be prepared practically? The first thing that would come to my mind is prayer and, and close relationship with Jesus. But I'm looking at something that we learned from COVID. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my COVID experience in a, minute, in a moment. But one thing we learned from COVID, uh, from, yes, from COVID was the importance of vitamin D. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Okay. So um, we know, of course, vitamin D. We grew up knowing that vitamin D was important for strong bones and muscles. But I don't remember much about being told that it was important for my immune system. But we know today it's very important. And COVID taught us that those that had adequate levels of vitamin D survived when others didn't. I'll give you some specifics for a moment. One study that I thought was quite interesting, those individuals who had vitamin D levels between 40 and 50 nanograms per milliliter, which is the way they measure it, uh, had the lowest rates of coronavirus. It seems to be protective. Another study looked at COVID patients in the hospital. Those that made it to the hospital, it's, it, they found that even if they were as old as 80 years old, if they had an average uh, vitamin D level of 41 nanograms per milliliter, they survived being there, even at that older age, and were released. Now, I, I, I wonder how many people here even know your vitamin D levels, those numbers. See, not many hands. I didn't expect that. It's often on your lab reports, but they just tell you it's good or basically they don't even refer to it individually. But uh, you may want to check that out because to know where you really are in that area. Uh, you can even go Google and buy your own kit and do it at home for $50 probably to talk about it. But let me give you a, a little bit more information about that. It's estimated anywhere between 40% and 90% of Americans are vitamin D deficient. You say, well, I thought sunshine took care of all that. Well, who's out in the sunshine anymore? Even kids don't play outdoors anymore. When do you see kids playing their video games outdoors? You know, and so food doesn't give us much vitamin D, but supplements are easy to take. And supplements will make, can make a difference. Um, the Institute of Medicine, I've, I've, I've tried to find out a consistent answer to, to what is really an ideal vitamin D level that we should aim for if you do find out your levels. And the best we can come up with generally is between 30 and 50 nanograms per milliliter. But most Americans barely make 20. And so, if, and vitamin D has to be in your system several days before it even becomes helpful to you. So you don't want to wait till you're sick with disease X and start doing some of these things. Now, I'm not a physician, I'm a health educator. But as we, as we in our church rallied together when COVID hit, I want to tell you some things that happened. Number one, it nearly split our church. You know, can you imagine what I'm talking about? The two different sides. However, God blessed us to press together. We have about 200 members. I'm from Dunlap, Tennessee. And our health committee became very active. And we began to try to put together a protocol to help our people. In fact, we even wrote a booklet for the coronavirus. If you're interested in it, it's on our website, the Dunlap Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it's on there on a link. You can download a 16-page document. And we looked at the things that might be to be helpful to us. So we help people, and we formed four different teams in our church geographically surrounding our valley 
that we were first responders. We weren't in action at the very beginning. We were all in a bit of fear or anger, depending on what side you were on, as to what we could do safely. But eventually, we were able to go right into people's homes and help them. We bought 35 to 50 of those Russian steam baths, a little portable steam bath for $100, $150 that you can get inside of and get a really good treatment. And we started doing that for the first couple of days of a COVID experience. And then we'd recommend switching to chest treatments since it's more of a respiratory disease. And we used the hot fomentations on the chest over a period of time, several revolutions of those with a heating pad on the back. And we increased their vitamin D. We had NAC and quercetin and so on, some of the typical things. It's in our booklet. You know, over a period of COVID, <clears throat> Out of all the people we helped get started, <clears throat> we didn't lose one single member that followed, that, followed our <clears throat> that followed the routine. Now, I want to tell you a couple of situations that did come up. So we got these steam baths, and we would, get, we would take them to their home. We'd load it to them or sell it to them. They could pay for what we paid for it. But we got them started. We had one man that worked for the government he was a fairly good-sized fella, and he came down with COVID. I took over to his house, the steam bath. I set it up for him. We gave him our protocol, how to use it. Our, it's just a suggestion. And he took the first treatment because I got him started. But after that, he just said, I don't feel like it. I mean, when you're sick, you don't feel like a lot of things. But it was life and death. It could be. And so <clears throat> four or five days later, we hadn't heard from him, he's in the hospital. And he it, it ends up on a ventilator. One week, two weeks, three weeks, he's still alive. Four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, still alive. I don't remember what week it was, but like the early church prayed for Peter to be released from prison, our church was on their knees praying that it could be turned around. And about six weeks later, he got off that ventilator. The doctor said he will never be normal, but at least he's alive. Wrong. He's fully normal. He's teaching Sabbath school. He's preaching. He's one of our elders. So that really was a blessing. But don't follow his example. If you're sick, you need the treatments. Now, we had another brother. He was a, a nurse. He was about my age or just a little younger. Trim, thin. He was in charge of our literature. He got COVID about the time my wife got COVID, and then I got COVID. And, he, and so and he knew about the steam baths. That's just a starting point. So I got him the steam bath, and three days later, he called me. He says, I'm getting worse. I can hardly breathe. And I said, brother, how many treatments have you had? He says, none. I didn't feel like it, and my wife couldn't help me. Is there anybody that can help me? How do you think I felt? I'm sick as a dog myself. My wife and I are giving each other treatments. And, and, and it was early in COVID and nobody wanted to go. Nobody wanted to go. Later we did, once we got past our COVID. And we went into people's home and gave them treatments. That man ended up going to the hospital and he died. And so I'll never forget that, it'll break my heart. I wanted to go help him, but I couldn't. And nobody else was willing. Disease X is coming. Right? You know that. The other foot's going to drop. The other shoe's going to drop. We need to learn simple, natural remedies and be prepared for whatever may be coming. I want to read to you a statement in closing uh, from Councils on Health, page 506. Please think about this. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation. Does that sound familiar? Those who would stand for freedom of conscience, does that sound familiar? Will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, and prevention, and cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere that's the medical missionary freedom. There will be suffering ones, guess how many? Plenty. 
there will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need your help. A few months ago, I was up in Gatlinburg with my family, and we did a little browsing around the stores, and I came across this hat. I don't know if you can read it out there, but it says, normal isn't coming back, but Jesus is. <laughs> but it gets better. You can't read the text, but you know what the text is? Revelation 14. I, I found this in Gatlinburg. I said, there's got to be an Adventist behind this somewhere. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon, but we're his footmen. We need to be ready to help the people around us. There's going to be suffering ones. There's plenty of them. Yes, Jesus is coming, but we have a work to do before he gets here. Thank you.